chapter 14. Maniac loved his new life. He loved his new sneakers, the ones Mrs. Beale bought for him. He loved the new quietness of his footsteps as he trotted Bow Wow through the early morning streets. He loved the early morning, the before the working people time, he called it, when even those who went to work the earliest were still sleeping behind their second story shades. When it seemed as if the whole world had been created just before he woke up on his bedroom floor, the red brick rows of houses, even the windows resting from faces, the cool, silent sidewalks and streets, so quiet you could hear the water running far below the sewer grates while the sun shinnied up the rain spouts. He loved the silence and solitude. But he also loved the noise, which came later in the day. He loved the sound of pancake batter hissing on the griddle. He loved the noise of the church they went to on Sunday mornings, a church called Bethany, when the minister would thump on the pulpit and the people would call out, amen, and the choir would swing this way and swing that way and would sing hallelujah to the people, and the people would sing hallelujah right back to the choir, and everyone just got happier and happier, and it all made him want to do more than run, so one day, he just jumped himself up on the pew bench and threw his arms to the sky and shouted at the top of his lungs, hallelujah, amen. And this time, nobody looked funny at the crazy kid yelling by himself. And two members of his own family, Hester and Lester, jumped onto the bench with him and shouted away, hallelujah, amen. And everybody laughed and clapped and sang. He loved the 4th of July block party when the whole East End converged for a day and night of games and music and grilled chicken and ribs and sweet potato pie and dancing until the last firecracker and then some. Maniac loved the colors of the East End, the people colors. For the life of him, he couldn't figure out why these East Enders called themselves black. He kept looking and looking and the colors he found were ginger snap and light fudge and dark fudge and acorn and butter rum and cinnamon and burnt orange, but never licorice, which to him was real black. He especially loved the warm brown of Mrs. Beale's thumb as it appeared from under the creamy white icing that she allowed him to lick away when she was frosting his favorite cake. He loved joining all the colors at the vacant lot and playing the summer days away. Stickball, basketball, football. Half the time, he forgot to go home for lunch. One day, a new kid, tall and lean, came to the vacant lot, spinning a football. He spotted Maniac and stopped cold. He came closer, bent over, stared, and broke open a billboard grin and called out, Hey, everybody, remember I said about the little white dude that snatched the pass off me in gym class? Here he is. This is the dude. And of course, this was hands down. The first thing Hans did when they chose upsides was to pick Maniac for his team. You crazy, Hans, the high schooler laughed. He's just a runt. His peach fuzz ain't even coming yet. Everybody laughed. But Hans took him anyway and played quarterback and threw passes to Maniac all day long. They huddled and scratched their plays in the dirt, down to the tin can and break for the goal, stop and go at the rock, curl around at the junk tire. If Hans pass were anywhere near Maniac, if Maniac could get at least two fingertips on it, the ball was as good as caught. The high schoolers and junior hires went crazy trying to stop him. Nobody kept official records that day, but legend has it that by the time Amanda Beale showed up and called, Jeffrey, dinner, Maniac had scored 49 TDs. And when they played stickball and they saw him pulling the ball out to the street and into the backyards, they started putting two and two together and somebody came up to him squinting in his face and said, you that maniac kid? And somebody else said, you that maniac? And pretty soon everybody was saying it, including Hester and Lester. And finally in the kitchen one day, as he licked white icing from his thumb, Mrs. Beale said, you that maniac? He told her what he told everyone. I'm Jeffrey, you know me because he was afraid of losing his name and with it, the only thing that he had left from his mother and father. Mrs. Beale smiled. Yeah, I know you all right. You'll be nothing but Jeffrey in here. But she nodded to the door. Out there, I don't know. She was right, of course. Inside his house, a kid gets one name. But on the other side of the door, it's whatever the rest of the world wants to call him. <laughs>